What's that coming over the hill? Is it a reboot? Is it a reboot? Oh, uh, no, no, sorry, not that one. I meant the other hill. Yeah, yeah, that one. <clears throat> What's that coming over the hill? Is it a reboot? Is it a reboot? Apparently, yes. But it's not a very good one. So, because a lot of you seem to enjoy and agree with my complaints on CGI Fime and Sam, I've now decided to tell you all my complaints on another recent reboot that nobody likes. Bob the Builder. Now, you're all probably wondering why I'm making this video now instead of three years ago when this reboot started, but now that we're three seasons into this reboot series, I think there's enough character, story, and material to finally make this video a reality. Yeah, I know, despite all the negative feedback, they still managed to make three seasons of this. Are the people at Mattel Creations just blind to negative criticism or something? Anyway, Bob the Builder. I really liked watching this show as a kid. Along with Fireman Sam, Postman Pat, Pingu, Thomas the Tank Engine, this was one of my favourite one of these shows from the BBC. Or, used to be on the BBC. Entertaining stories, really enjoyable characters, fluid, humorous animation, a nice, charming sense of humour, interesting character and vehicle designs, Rob Ragstraw voicing a hundred characters at once is really impressive, and the music was very catchy and rememberable. Eventually, they decided to make a US dub of the show for American audiences to enjoy. Very similar as to how they handled Thomas the Tank Engine. Even though American kids love the show too, I do have to admit, this dub is nowhere near as enjoyable as the UK dub. I mean, no offense to whoever grew up watching the US dub and all, but... Sometimes certain things would be better off if they just stayed in the UK. <coughs> After a few years, the show was a massive hit here in the UK, for kids and even adults alike. Hell, the album version of the show's theme song, Can We Fix It, was number one of the Christmas charts of 2000, even beating out Westlife. Bob, the builder, has fixed it. The kiddies TV favourite is the Christmas number one after beating off the Irish boy band Westlife. His song, unbelievable though it might seem, is also said to be the biggest seller of the year. And one popular purchase this year has taken a cartoon favourite to the top of the charts. Bob the Builder has beaten off the boy band Westlife to become Christmas number one. Now that is something to be proud of. In 2004, the staff decided to take a new route with the show and produced a new series, Bob the Builder Project Build It. Now, many people have stated that this is a spin-off series for the show. But, it clearly isn't. I mean, a spin-off is a series with a minor character in a lead role, in a different location, but still set in the same universe, and sometimes even a new tone. Examples include Timon and Pumba, The Cleveland Show, and Dazzly and Muttley in their flying machines. But Project Build It continues the story the original series left off, all the main characters are still the main cast, the exact same voice actors, the exact same animation team. The only difference is that it's now set in a new location. This is not a spin-off series. It's pretty much the same reason as to why Shadow the Hedgehog isn't a spin-off. Anyway, Project Build It... I find it to be a very interesting series, especially for little kids. The entire series is basically one big mission. Build a new eco-friendly town and community for Sunflower Valley. I love this idea. The team is now constructing entire buildings and towns instead of just, say, mending fences or cleaning out pipes. The designs of each of these projects is really unique, creative, and clever. There are lots of new machines joining the team, and it's informing the little kids on how to be more environmentally friendly. I'm sure most people might hate this part of the show, but... 
Hey, it's teaching the kids something, right? But after a few seasons, Project Build It was eventually cancelled for unknown reasons, so the story wasn't exactly wrapped up at the end. But afterwards, they made another Bob the Builder series, Ready Steady Build. Now this is a spin-off series, since they are now using CGI animation, cause it was cheaper than the stop motion, They've moved into an entirely new town close to the sea, and it doesn't seem to follow or even mention the previous storyline. Although, all the same characters and voice actors are still in the series. Which kind of confuses me. So, did they finish everything in Sunflower Valley? Why haven't they moved back into Bobsville? What about Bob's dad? Have they just left him and Benny to still do all the repair jobs? Did Bob even tell his dad that they are now moving into Fixum Harbor? Far too complex for you to understand. Right. But then, a few years later, Ready Steady Build, and in any case, the entire original Bob the Builder series was cancelled in 2012. Why? I have no idea. I honestly don't know why. Was the show not that fun to watch anymore? Was everyone complaining about the new animation? Though, to be fair, I probably would have complained too. I'm just not used to seeing the human's mouths emote anything other than a smile, or seeing the machine's grill mouths talking. Especially Travis. <sighs> That's just weird. But then, after only two to three years after Ready Steady Build was cancelled... No, I'm not even joking. Three years. That is not a lot of time. Mattel, and then named Hit Entertainment, decided to make a brand new Bob the Builder reboot. Yeah, this series isn't continuing the story from the other series, it's not going to have a similar cartoony setting to it, it's not even going to have any of the original voice actors. This is going to be completely different and starting all over again from scratch. And everyone, including myself, already knew everything was going to go horribly wrong just from this teaser poster alone. We'll get back to this later. For now, let's talk about one of the only things I seem to like about this reboot. The new theme song. The beat is catchy, it's just as fun to sing as the original, and the lyrics are mostly the same. But even with that said, this remix still has a few problems. I mean, let's listen to the version of the theme in the opening intro. Boots check, tool belt check, hard hat check. Have you noticed anything missing here? They cut out a specific lyric in the verse! Bob and the gang have so much fun Working together, they get the job done Bob and the team have so much fun And they get the job done! Yeah. Why did they cut it out? What, did the intro have to be exactly 30 seconds long? Then, maybe you could have cut out Bob doing an unnecessary checklist and just put in some drill sound effects or something. If you cut out the lyric entirely, the song feels unfinished because there's now seven parts to it instead of eight. If you know what I mean. And what's even more insulting is that in the extended version of this remix, they actually put in the missing lyric. Bob and the team have so much fun. Working together, they get the job done! Yeah! If they already recorded the singer singing the line, then why didn't you complete the entire song? Oh, and there's also something else different in this remix. Scoop, Muck and Dizzy and Rolly too. Lofty and Wendy join the crew. Scoop, Muck and Lofty and Two Times Two. Leo and Wendy join the crew. Rolly and Dizzy are not mentioned in the intro. Instead, Leo and Tutan. 
Why? Because they haven't been giving these two characters enough screen time. Yeah, two essential characters, who were part of the main cast in the original series, have now been pushed to the side as supporting characters, characters who appear every now and again. Why did they make this decision? It's been clearly established many times that a steamroller and a cement mixer are just as important for a building project as a digger or a crane. After all, Dizzy pours concrete for the foundations, otherwise all the furniture and machines would be sitting on grass or dirt instead of something solid, and Roly makes the whole ground nice and flat before building, or the lumps on the ground would cause problems or inaccurate measurements. Besides, both Roly and Dizzy have plenty of story ideas for them. Plenty. But apparently, the riders or even the animators, barely seem to acknowledge either of them because, for some reason, they seem to focus all of their story ideas on either Mark, Lofty, or about, like, 70% of the time, Scoop. And while we focus more on the Big Red Dumbass, one of the few characters with a brain, and the yellow, high-pitched, annoying digger who screws everything up all the time, barely any of the other characters get the focus or get a clear enough understanding on what their personalities are. Two-Ton, Tiny, Betsy, Curtis, Philip, Roly... They barely focus on them, or have many episodes focusing on them. Hell, even when they're introducing new characters, like Tread, Shifter, Stretch, Rocky, or Norm, they hardly even focus on them either. And also, they just all appear out of nowhere with no introductory episode whatsoever. I mean, a lot of Thomas characters get an introductory episode. Ryan had one, Scruff had one, Hugo had one, Winston had one. They even gave one to Charlie and the Logging Locos, the most hated characters in the entire series. But not these guys. They appear out of nowhere, with no story on where they all came from, if they came from another yard or were freshly built, or even any indication on where they sleep in the yard. The visual designs and setting in this reboot is as far away from the original source material as you can possibly go. The visual design in the original was a very simple cartoony design, like something you can draw on paper translated into 3D models. Need I remind you, all the trees and bushes are literally cardboard cutouts. But in the reboot, everything looks way too realistic and detailed for it to feel like Bob the Builder. I mean, this looks more like a live-action movie of Bob the Builder, directed by someone who has no idea what the show is like. I mean, just look at Bob. He clearly looks like a photograph of someone cosplaying as Bob the Builder. And not to mention, look at his face! Why does the design make him look so young? Seriously, it looks like he's 15! And the machines? Not only do they all look completely different from the originals too, but the designs for the machines feel... kinda lazy to me. What do I mean by lazy? Well, what I seem to imagine the designers do is taking a photo of a real-life construction vehicle, recoloring it into an unusual color, like pink or purple or green, slapping a generic smiley face on it, and BOOM! New character. Now, some of you might be asking me, well, isn't that kind of the same way they also design new Thomas characters? Well, yes, but that kind of design makes sense, since that series was originally meant to be taken as realistically as possible. The Railway series, anyone? But Bob the Builder was never meant to look realistic. The only realistic thing about the original were the life lessons and the construction work and safety, not the designs. The personalities of all the old characters, with the exception of Bob, Wendy, and probably Dizzy, are all completely different. Mr. Bentley isn't a building inspector, but Mayor Madison's assistant. 
not to mention a bumbling buffoon, Rowley is rather fussy, making sure everything is nice and flat, instead of smooth and calm with a love of music. Mark seems a lot dumber than the original, or maybe it could just be the voice. Scoop is younger, easily overexcited, hardly pays any attention to anything important, and when being put in charge of a job, he always screws it up either unintentionally, or most of the time, on purpose. Yeah, do you know why Bob and Wendy could trust Scoop to be in charge in the original? Because he was sensible and reliable. But the one character that had a complete 180 to his personality was Lofty. Good God, what did they do to Lofty? The character who was once written as an adorable coward. Sure, his voice can get irritating after a while, but you really do feel sorry for him at times. And I bet he was a character most kids watching the show could really relate to. But here, Lofty is more confident, is hardly scared of anything, is more intelligent, and sometimes has a bit of a rude or sarcastic edge to him. Oh no, my emergency light's broken! He's yellow, he's strong, but his light's gone wrong! <laughs> Whenever Scoop or Mark screw up with a project, Lofty is usually the one who questions them, or says that it isn't a good idea, instead of, say, Leo or someone. But even with that said, he never says, I think so, after they all say, Can we fix it? Yes, we can! can. Even in a normal case of when after Scoop or Leo or someone fucks up everything and have to rebuild everything a second time in just a very limited amount of time, even then he never says, Uh, I think so. Do I also need to mention that the voices are also very different? Scoop sounds way too high-pitched. Wow, I'm a natural on camera! Ooh! There, I'm a scoop. Mark sounds like a dumbass. Are we, um... Um... I can't think of anything to ask, Bob. Lofty has an Irish accent for some reason. Do people prefer the pizza flavour to the sardine and spinach flavour? Rolly sounds like he just sucked up a bowel of helium. Now I've ruined everything. I'm so sorry. Oh, and here's something rather questionable. Mark is male in the US dub of the reboot. Yeah, for those who haven't seen it yet, in the US dub of the original series, they decided to make Mark a female character instead of keeping him male. That still boggles me, even to this day. Did they change the gender just so they can have an unnecessary gender balance thing to the main cast? No one was complaining about the amount of male characters here in the UK, so why did they even bother with it? So, for all of those people who grew up watching the US dub of the show, they're all going to be confused as hell when they find out that Mark is now suddenly male in this reboot. Though, this is more of a problem the original series had, not necessarily the reboot. Speaking of the voices, the new voice actors they chose for the series is quite the interesting cast. Let's see, we've got Richard Ian Cox, Ian James Corlett, Jacob Scipio, Steve Kineman, oh, of course, Joanne Froget, Lee Ingleby, uh, wait a minute, Vincent Tong, Blake Harrison, Claire Corlett? I'm sorry, am I seeing things right now? Wow, we! A pocket full of pirates! Directed by Mr. Bentley and Dizzy! <sighs> what are you doing here, Claire? Was there really no other voice roles you could choose from? Okay, I don't know how much you know about the original Bob the Builder, or if you ever grew up watching the original series, but. Did you ever question the scripts they were giving you? Oh, and apparently, Dizzy is another one of those voice roles of hers where they once again ask her to do her high-pitched Sweetie Belle voice, even though she was 15 when this started. As if no other actor in the whole of Canada can be able to do that voice. Ooh, arr, 
Tommy Hearty. Man the mizzen mast. Land ahoy. Walk the plank, ye scurvy dog. Still speaking of characters, the reboot doesn't even try to bring any old characters back. The closest we get are Farmer Pickles, but not until season 3, and Pilchard. Why did they keep Pilchard blue? I mean, think about it. I've just been complaining that the reboot looks way too realistic. The settings, the humans, the machines. So, who decided that it should be a good idea to have a blue cat be chased by a normal brown and white dog in a realistic vet? It just seems really out of place. And, as I just said, Farmer Pickles, a secondary character in the original, only has a 20 second appearance in the season 3 episode Barn Building Bedlam! Yeah, what he said. Come on, why couldn't you just throw in your own version of Travis while you're at it? I mean, you got Farmer Pickles, you made a model for him, you brought Rob Rackstraw back to voice him again, even though the voice sounds like nothing like the original, he had one line of dialogue and you make him work on a farm with cows and sheep in a barn the team just built. Why not add in Travis to complete the whole set? Oh yeah, and Spud? They didn't do anything with him, period. Well, I guess it would make sense. I don't think a walking, talking, laughing, comic relief scarecrow with a massive head full of straw, silly trousers, a stripy scarf and a parsnip for a nose would fit into this realistic environment the show is now going for. Wait, hang on. So they allowed to have a blue cat walk around in this environment, but not a walking, talking scarecrow? Or maybe even a human character with a personality similar to Spud, called... Potato? When it comes to new additions to the team, they don't try to bring back any old characters, but rather new characters entirely. Actually, calling them new characters would be a bit of a stretch. The way I see them, most of them are just reused characters from the original, but with a new name and a different coat of paint. I mean, Shifter is just basically Trix, Two-Ton is Packer, even then he also has a cement mixer attachment, so he's a rip-off of Tumblr too. Stretch is a combination of both Gripper and Grabber, Pixie is Flex, Thud is Rumble, and Rocky is Scratch. Oh yeah, and why does Tread need to be on the team? D just why? He's a little off-road truck with a cable rope. What good would he do at a construction site? Well, I mean, adding Scrambler into the team in Project Build It? It made sense. Sunflower Valley is very hilly and hardly has any roads. It has lots of mud, hills, rocks and mountains, and Bob would have used Scrambler to help him get a better look at the valley or find the best places for certain projects. But Tread? There's no real purpose for him. Most of the building jobs the team does are usually set in either Spring City or in the countryside that hardly has any hills. So, what's really the purpose of Tread existing? What, for towing and rescuing purposes if needed? They have Lofty! He can do it! The story for most of these episodes seem really predictable. The team is set out on a job, they start building, the focus character for the episode, whether it be Scoop or Mark or Leo, has some ridiculous or stupid idea, he screws everything up, the project collapses, they apologize, then they rebuild it all back up again. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure they always have a second lot of the materials they need, and enough speed and power to get the whole thing rebuilt again in just one afternoon, if the whole thing falls apart again. And when they're not reusing the same story elements and character blunders over and over again, they are sometimes reusing plot lines from certain episodes of the original series. I bet Pilchard's off, off snoozing somewhere. She won't even know how worried Wendy is. Wendy doesn't need to worry. Because Pilchard will come back when Pilchard comes back. I don't think Pilchard would run away, Muck. Cats do wander off, but they like to come home eventually. 
<laughs> Especially at meal times. Ah! Rolly, what was that noise? Oh, oh, it's your trumpet. Uh oh. <gasps> I flattened all the instruments and ruined the concert. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Speaking of repeating stuff, the building montages. They're not that fun to watch anymore. Why? The music that goes with them. Instead of using a variety of different instrumentals or different versions of them, like in the original, they only play one song, plus the instrumental version of it. Well, okay, the We Are A Team song isn't really that bad. I mean, if they were to only use the instrumental version of the song for all these montages, I wouldn't have a problem with it, honestly. It's catchy enough on its own. But the vocal version sounds rather bland to me. But then it soon becomes unlistenable once you find out that they play the same bland song for every single bloody episode and i swear if you were to take a drink every time you hear the word team in this song you would be unconscious in seconds seriously Recently, in late 2017, Mainframe, which I think was the current animation team for the reboot, ceased animating new content for the show, for some reason, and the series is now animated by DHX Media. Yes, that DHX. In the third season, the animation style is completely different. Even more different than how different the reboot already was compared to the original. Everything is a lot brighter and more colourful, the vehicle characters are way more bouncy, expandable and wacky, and is it me or did the animators forget to put in any shading? There's hardly any shadows. And just look at Bob's face again. How can they take Bob's design, which already made him look a lot younger than he should, and somehow make him look even younger? Seriously, he looks like he's 12! Boots check, tool belt check, hard hat check. Bob the Builder, can we build it? Uh, no. You can't just show stock footage of the HD fully detailed animation from the previous company and then fade into this worse animation. You just can't. Yeah, the animation style is completely different than before. It's almost as if the people at Mattel Creations finally woke up and saw all the negative criticisms about the show's realistic tone, so they decided to make it up to the fans by putting in a more cartoony animation style in order to simulate the animation from the original series or something. But it's clearly too late for that. We've already had two whole seasons of trying to get used to this new animation, which, by this point in time, we pretty much have gotten used to it. So this new animation looks way too different to fit in with the rest of the series. It seriously looks like something out of a mobile game or something. It's just way too different. Why can't I be as good as Bob? He's just good, good, good. He never makes mistakes. Well, I wouldn't go as far as that. Bob wasn't always good at building things. In fact, he used to make a lot of mistakes when he was a young builder. Let me tell you the story of Bob's first build. Aw, isn't that cute? The reboot wants to create its own backstory. Even though we're now three seasons in and they're still rubbish at telling stories anyway. Oh, and just to let you know, Bob's first build it's exactly the same as Bob's backstory in When Bob Became a Builder. Helping build stuff with his dad, making a few mistakes at first, even to the point that Scoop was Bob's first machine. Wow. Just... Just wow. Build a brand new shed! And this one will be even better than the last! You better believe it, Scoop. Thanks, Dad. 
Well then, how come we've never seen you use your dad's hammer? Hmm? Oh, and by the way, what happened to Bob's dad? Did he retire and move away somewhere? Is he dead? Was he separated from the family due to marriage problems? What about Bob's mom? Where was she back in the day? And come on, you couldn't even bring Neil Mossere back to do a voice cameo? This would have been a great opportunity, because not only would you be appealing to the older audience who grew up watching the original, but it would be honouring the 20th anniversary of the franchise, and it would be somewhat of a metaphor of the old generation passing the torch over to the new generation. But nope. Just reuse Lee Ingleby and have him do it. Blow. So, yeah, those are the majority of the problems I have with this Bob the Builder reboot. Now, I'm not going to say that it needs to be cancelled, like I said about Feynman Sam. The show is honestly fine enough as it is. It's not really as offensive, not as annoying, not as half assed not as bad as CGI Feynman Sam, because... Despite all of the problems I've spent the past few minutes complaining about, why have I then still managed to watch every single episode of this reboot, even back when it started? I have no idea. It's just one of those questions I can never find the answer to. Maybe it's the theme song, I don't know.